Hi everyone, it's me again. For those of you who are watching for the first time, my name is Gigi, and this is video number three of a series of videos I've put together detailing information about iron deficiency anemia. Now that we understand the causes and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, let's talk about how we can help our patients. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of the types of treatments available for patients with iron deficiency anemia. I will let you know when the discussion of treatment has ended. Then, if you would like to continue and watch, at the end, I have included some common terms associated with iron deficiency anemia and their translation into Spanish. I know many times we will encounter a diverse group of patients. I only know Spanish as a second language, or else I would, I would have included other languages as well. If you do check it out, I hope you find it useful, especially in your clinical practice, because that's where it all matters. Now, let's discuss treatment. The first step in the treatment of iron deficiency anemia is to treat the underlying illness, if any. For example, if it were caused by a hookworm, you'd want to treat the hookworm. Or if it were caused by an inflammatory bowel process, you'd want to treat that first. Or, in, or alongside any other treatments specifically for the iron deficiency. Then, at the same time, iron supplementation will be prescribed. Usually they're, they're taken orally, however, if that is not possible, iron supplementation is available intravenously. Iron therapy, in combination with dietary strategies to increase iron and vitamin C intake, effectively treats iron deficiency by raising the hemoglobin, hemo, hemoglobin level and replacing iron stores. The CDC recommends an iron dosage of 60 milligrams of elemental iron one to two times per day for adolescents with anemia. There are many different types of iron supplements and they have different amounts of elemental iron content. The, mo the most common one and the least expensive is ferrous sulfate. Now let's remember, iron is absorbed primarily in the duodenum where the acidic environment keeps, it, keeps iron in its soluble form. Beyond that, bicarbonate released from the pancreas makes iron less soluble. So those delayed release iron preparations, although they're better tolerated, may be less effective and are more expensive. Also, do remember iron supplements are absorbed most effectively when taken on an empty stomach. If any GI intolerance occurs, such as nausea, constipation, or diarrhea, then taking the supplements with food or at bedtime may alleviate these sy symptoms. To summarize, to maximize absorption, iron supplements should be taken with liquids other than milk, coffee, tea, or phosphate-containing carbonated beverages, such as soft drinks. Also, they should not be taken within one hour of any antacids, acid blockers, or calcium supplements, or multivitamins. As I mentioned, iron deficiency anemia is usually resolved after six to eight weeks of treatment. With this treatment, patients with iron deficiency anemia, anemia usually increase their hemoglobin levels and their iron stores within 6 to 8 weeks of treatment. Once hemoglobin levels have returned to normal, then it is recommended to continue taking a low dosage of iron, perhaps about 30 milligrams per day, for an additional 1 to 2 months in order to get your iron stores a little bit increased. And lastly, a blood transfusion has been used as treatment for iron deficiency anemia, but that's in the most severe cases when hematocrit and hemoglobin levels are extremely low. This concludes the discussion on treatment for iron deficiency anemia. Thank you for watching and uh, good luck on your exam. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you find this Spanish translation of some common words associated with iron deficiency anemia useful. All right, thanks for sticking around. I'll get started. I'll call this tutorial, small little tutorial, iron deficiency anemia in Espanol. So I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just go, um, I have a couple words in English that are associated with iron deficiency anemia, and then I will write out the Spanish word, and then I'll say the Spanish word so you have the pronun correct pronunciation and then that will conclude the video. So let's get started. Why don't we start with the actual words in the disease, iron deficiency anemia. 
some of the main problems. So we have iron, iron in Spanish, hierro, hierro, deficiency, deficiencia, deficiencia, anemia. This one's easy. It's actually spelled the same, but it's just pronounced differently. Anemia, anemia, red blood cells, glóbulos rojos, glóbulos rojos. Then we have oxygen. Oxygen is oxígeno, oxígeno. All right, well, those are some general terms. How about we talk about some symptoms? And maybe that'll help you with your patients if they don't speak English and just Spanish, then maybe you can um, remember the the Spanish word for that symptom. So I have a list of symptoms here. Dizzy. Mareado. Mareado. Weak. Débil. Débil. Pale. Pálido. Pálido. And low blood pressure. Baja presión. Baja presión. All right, I have a list of a couple of other words that may be helpful when counseling your patient and providing them with uh, suggestions for treatment. Oh, I just realized I wrote supplement twice. Suplemento, suplemento. And then you can counsel them on their diet. Diet in Spanish is spelled this way. Alimentación, alimentación. And then some suggestions for where they can get iron in their diet. Meat is carne, carne. Fish is pescado, pescado. And spinach is espinaca, espinaca. All right, this concludes iron deficiency anemia in Espanol. And this also concludes the video. Thanks again for watching. Good luck on your exam.